Hello and welcome to the ZOC. I'm your host, Andrew Carvin. This is mostly unscripted and unedited. Today we'll be talking about the Atari Flashback 5, a classic game console. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, Atari was a much-beloved gaming console uh, well before the time of uh, Nintendos and Xboxes and Playstations and all of that. I actually had a Atari, and a real one, for a substantial portion of my gaming life. And in fact, uh, when we were stationed over in Germany, uh, me, my mom, and my stepfather, who was in the military, uh, this is what we had for entertainment, aside from a VCR. So we had an Atari at one time, and uh, it got a lot of play. Um, I never had all the games, uh, so this will actually have some gaming content in it that I've never seen before, so that's actually pretty cool. But uh, the Atari Flashback is for, you know, people who want to revisit some of their uh, childhood or experience a different kind of gaming system uh, that they haven't before. Uh, the Atari is an important piece of gaming history. If ever there is a gaming console that brought gaming into the home, uh, this is the system that did it. Uh, without Atari, we'd probably still have home gaming today, but uh, it, it was really Atari that kicked it off. It was an inexpensive system, the games were inexpensive, the games were simple, because uh, the joystick only had like one button and uh, it had an analog joystick. So it, it was easy to get into the game, and it was multiplayer. Uh, so you could play with more than just yourself <laughs> when you uh, played the games. Uh, has 92 built-in games. This is the front of the box. Here's the back of the box detailing many of the games that you get with the system built-in. And this is a plug-and-play unit, so no need to have a old analog TV. All you need is something that has RCA inputs and most any television these days uh, will have those, including the high-definition televisions. Although we're, we are gradually switching to High definition everything, RCA jacks are still used for video and audio output and input. So there you have it. Open the box, and you can see it's very well packed. The Atari just sits right in there along with its two controllers. Here's the instruction manual. The instruction manual comes with a description of each of the 92 games. Uh, so if you're interested in reading up on the game you're playing, well, there you have it. Not, not a whole lot of story for any of the games, because that's kind of normal for Atari games. Due to the limitations of the systems, the, the games themselves had to be somewhat simplistic. But still lots of fun, which is why this uh, system is so beloved. So there's the instruction manual. You will, it doesn't come with batteries, so you will need four AAA batteries. I recommend getting rechargeables because rechargeables are really cheap these days. You can buy them in bulk on Amazon.com and It'll save you a lot of money. Uh, seriously, uh, stop buying disposable batteries. You're an idiot if you d buy disposable batteries. You'll, you'll save money by just getting some rechargeables. They don't even have to be Energizer. They have several different brands. I have Tenergy and some other kind, mostly. These are ones that my mom picked up for me. She actually got me the Atari Flashback for Christmas which I really like. I haven't tried it out yet, so that's what I'll be doing in this video, and the dogs are barking. And here's one of the joysticks. 
nice analog joystick has good give and pushback has the button right there and has the infrared sensor which is uh, something important to talk about is that since it does have an infrared sensor you do have to keep it lined up with the front of the Atari the infrared sensor is right there so wherever you put this thing you have to make sure that you're putting it someplace where it can be uh, able to connect to that. It has a couple other buttons. It has a reset button so you can reset the Atari from wherever you're sitting and choose a different game. A select button so you can select games. A start button so you can start games. Uh, these buttons used to be on the Atari unit itself in the manner of switches and they're still on there they have left uh, difficulty well, left right difficulty buttons uh, select start power you still have to turn it on using this I think yeah you have to you still have to turn on using that here's the two cables you have to worry about connecting it to your TV this is the video cable and this is the audio cable I think so there's only two cables you have to worry about fairly compact unit here's the power adapter pretty small should be able to snug that into uh, most any kind of power setup you have reasonably easily sort of and here's the other one now um these controllers uh they view on this they do have this little screw on thing for the battery compartment uh, so you will need a screwdriver to get these things open to put the batteries in kind of annoying but I think I'm pretty sure that this might be a clasp type deal so maybe you could take the screw out and not have to put it back in but I'd recommend doing so anyway Annoyance aside, to make sure that the uh, screw doesn't fall out and the batteries don't fall out either. And of course, the nice thing about this is that the box is totally worth keeping. Put that in there, and that in there, that right there. Something like that. that. Maybe some batteries. Ah. Get in there. And you're all set to travel so if you get this system totally keep the box it's a great way to store the system away for storage <laughs> uh, or for travel or whatever so keep the box the box is not a useless piece of crap after you're done unpacking it it actually be a good idea to keep the box because you can use that to store it transport it later so anyway the place I'm playing this in is my bedroom. I will be sitting against the backdrop over there and it will be played on this TV right here, which I'm going to have to move the tripod back so you can see it. cramp quarters back in here. Fix the tripod. There we 
you. So that TV. TDB is a 40 inch high definition. When I give a demo of it, I'm going to have the uh, Atari sitting right in front of it. So it's going to be about right here. And I'm going to be operating it from quite a few feet away. Try to ignore the dust and shit. But the, the floor in here is tiled. And each tile is a foot. So roughly, we'll be testing this out from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll be playing this from eight feet away. So that'll give us a good idea about how effective the system is operating over distances. So anyway, I need to hook it up and I'll be back when it's hooked up. Okay, so there we have it. We have the Atari Flashback 5 system set up in front of the TV. Uh, the TV being right there. And the Atari sitting right in front of it. Update on the battery compartment thing. Um, the screws are really tiny, so one of the first things that happened is I pretty much immediately lost the screw. Uh, but that's okay. The battery compartment held, holds in just fine without it, so whether you keep the screws or not, or lose them on accident like I did, it'll hold in just fine. Now, something that I just now noticed is that there really there is a one-player and two-player joystick. If you're going to be playing by yourself, make sure you grab the player one joystick before you sit down, because that's the one that's the only one that has the reset, select, and start buttons on it. So make sure you grab this one, because the second player is just a jo regular joystick with only like an on/off and the uh, trigger fire button. So, let's play some games. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through each game. I'm going to play as many of them as I can before the battery runs out on my, uh, on my camera to give you some idea what the gameplay is like. Now, uh, for those of you who've never seen Atari before, uh, the, the games are quite basic, so this is not your... Xbox or PlayStation. Um, back in the day we had to make ample use of our imagination when it came to uh, graphics but that was part of the appeal to it. You know we could make up our own stories and the gameplay despite being graphically primitive were, was really fun. So let me back this thing up so we can get some uh, action. Okay. <laughs> I think it crashed. crashed again. <laughs> Maybe the controls are reversed. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Like I said, there are some games that I don't know how to play. Uh, 
let's start with some obvious ones. Where's asteroids? from about nine feet away give or take uh, over across a infrared uh, connection so it's actually performing really well um, I, I'm pretty sure I know why they chose infrared instead of wireless mainly because it, it uses up a lot less battery uh, than wireless so you can play for much much longer uh, so there is that See if I can find any other ones I recognize. Bowling I was playing a little bit ago. Woo! Of course the glare just depends on what kind of game you're playing. do too good that time. Nope. Oh, close. That's bowling. Let's see. Breakout. I'm going for the obvious ones because those are the ones I know how to play. Plus, they'll probably be familiar to you to a certain extent. Oh! A 
Okay. This one would have been done better with a paddle. I think in the collector's version you get a paddle, but that's okay. <laughs> well, that was a quick game. So if you're wondering what, about the odd angle the camera's at, it's because it's on my bed. Uh, there's no other place I can put it and still get that close to the screen. Also, I have to put it off to the side because since this is infrared, if I put the camera directly in front, it would block my being able to uh, communicate with the base unit. Um, the system does not have memory uh, like modern systems do. do. Uh, back in the day, when we played Atari, uh, we would have to record our high scores on a piece of paper and uh, just trust that people weren't lying about their score. Let's see. Oh, Crystal Castles. As you can imagine, playing an isometric game on an Atari was kind of hard, and it still is. So. Crystal Castles, is it? I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Crystal Castles. Arr, get away from me. Arr. Somebody call PETA. They're being mean to bear. Bear. Racists. Kill me. Arr.
kind of sucked back then when it came to this game too, so no surprises. Combat. This is a great game to uh, to have for multiplayer, not so much for single player. So this will definitely be a game that gets a lot of use with the two paddles. Uh, I'm only familiar with the first combat, and that's this one. I have very di various different ones for combat, like sea battles, not sea battles. I mean, t various di different versions of tank battles and uh, airplane battles, jet battles, so forth. Combat 2 I've never played. So let's see what this is about. Well, they got terrain in new combat. All fancy and shit. Okay. Also with the old... Oh, so there's like trees and shit you can hide in. Bridges to cross. Different terrain types that <laughs> Different trade types that make your tank go slower. Autopilot, they didn't have that in combat one. Oh, you can blow away trees? How about that? Terrain deformation in an Atari game. See? Red Faction's not the first time that was a thing. I blow away your trees and you can't hide from me. And I'll blow you up. There is it. He's over here. Hiding in his base. I'm not turn it. Shoot him. Bam! Well, I can blow up his base too. Cool. Oh, it's multi hit. Well, that is pretty spiff. I'm gonna just keep blowing his ass up. That's a damage indicator down there. Cool. <laughs> That's neat. So, Desert, oh. I've never played Desert Falcon, but we'll see. I suck at it too, but oh. Alright, what's this? Cavern? 
think that's just a Pac-Man clone. head first in the enemies. It's for ammo. I should probably not have shot all my bullets all willy nilly. Uh, where's my bullet indicator? No, I don't have a bullet indicator. Wait, okay, so that's my bullets up there. Okay, I have no idea. Earth World, oh yeah, uh, they have the entire Swords Quest thing in uh, the Tari flashback, and you can Wikipedia it. Apparently, the the Swords Quest th uh, thing was a competition across several different games that, that uh, involved. Uh, people winning actual prizes like golden crowns and uh, swords and all kinds of fancy shit. Uh, go look it up. Sword Quest Atari, uh, the angry video game nerd, uh, did a, a uh, video about it. And uh, it was pretty cool. I never really knew about it at the time that I played uh Sword Quest. I had the comic book that came along with it, but never got to do it myself. But uh, let's see, what else we got? Yeah, Earthworld, Fireworld are both part of the Sword Quest saga. Yep, yeah, there's Sword Quest. That brings back memories. And you'd have items that you would use in certain places. Kind of like an inventory system. I'm guessing the hole is over there. But your 
guess is as good as mine is how do I how do I get it over there? <laughs> I just seem to be whacking my balls into a corner. Okay, that, that'll probably require me reading the instruction manuals. That's the sun. I'm trying not to squish it by the sun. Just getting lucky with that alien ship. <laughs> Another game I suck at. Yeah. Jungle hunts.
punch a gator. Punch! Ha! Punch gator in the face! Gator punch! Punch! Sexton Taylor! Punch that gator right in the face! Now, this is the original Saxon Hale. He can punch gators in the face. Gator punch! Gator aid. Do I need some first aid after I punch you in the face? Urgh. Gator punch! <laughs> ah, shit! Millipede were both things out in the arcades, and I guess Millipede was like the more upgraded version of Centipede, so I think I had Millipede on my old Atari system, I'm not sure. Off the wall. Not sure what that is. We'll check it out here in a moment, but Missile Command first!
Missile Command. Good memories. Off the wall. Not familiar with this one. It's an Arkanoid. Oops. Okay. Clearly, there are some of these games that would be better off with paddles. But one of the nice things about this system that I haven't mentioned yet is that it does have two ports on the front that are fully compatible with the old Atari uh, joysticks and paddles. Uh, so, and you can still get those on eBay and various places. Uh, another reason why the system is, is such a loved system is that uh, they were built really well and uh, still to this day uh, many of them work uh, even though the systems are like 30 years old slot machine. Oh, you have to do actual driving. Okay. So kind of like tank battle only. Catch up to him. Blow him away. Let's go on to the next one. I gotta be running out of battery by now. Let's see, Space Invaders. Oh, shit. Pretty neat. 
I'm guessing this doesn't work unless the other player draws their sword. Alright, that's still pretty cool. Just trying that two more games. So that's pinball. And one last one. Now I definitely know I played this one a lot. Unfortunately, I can't remember how to... Sierra's Revenge. I'm kind of surprised they don't have Pac-Man on here, or maybe I missed it. Let's see. Nope, no Pac-Man. Hmm. Of course, uh, Pac-Man, along with E.T., was one of the two games that, uh, well, displeased a lot of people, let's put it that way. What I will say about this uh, plug-and-play system is that it does recreate the games uh, quite well. Um, it uh, it sounds exactly as I remember them. Sounds and looks exactly as I remember them. So uh, if you have fond memories about Atari and you want to uh, get back to uh, playing some Atari or just having a unique uh, portable uh, semi-portable, you still need a TV, but I mean a portable system that you could take with you and it's plug and play and uh, easy to hook up and all that good stuff, then I would totally get this. I mean, 
comes with 92 games, uh, quite a few of them two-player, uh, so you could easily uh, make a, an evening of this. And keep in mind, uh, I'm operating this from about nine feet away, so yes, it is infrared technology, and you do have to keep yourself from accidentally covering up the infrared port on this thing, or else it won't be able to do anything. Uh, and you have to make sure you're kind of like pointing it at the uh, console, but uh, it performs quite well. Uh, it's an excellent system to, to get. So uh, this has been the ZOC. I hope this has been informative and helped you decide about uh, getting the Atari Flashback 5. It is totally worth the money. Um, it will be a, a great system to add to your library, uh, wherever you may game. This video was filmed on location by Zarakan Productions. Zarakan Productions is an umbrella group for many YouTube shows and businesses both inside and outside of Second Life. Please go to zarakan.com for a complete listing of shows and businesses associated with Zarakan Productions and their own media links. Zarakan Productions shows have been organized alphabetically in playlists in a year, month, day format for easier video navigation. Multiple part videos have been named accordingly starting with part 1, and the last video of a multiple part video series will have end as a part of its title. Please like, comment, and share this video as it helps both Zarakan Productions and the creators of this video's content. Also, be sure to check the playlists for past episodes of show content, and subscribe to this channel for future videos. Thank you for watching, and happy wandering.